Hi everyone, it's me again, and uh, in this week's session, Nico, by the way, for those of you that don't know, um, in this week, last week we spoke about relationships, and this week what I want to do is bring it down to substitution work. Now by substitution, I'm talking about substituting personal experiences and relationships of your own life to the character that you're playing. Now these, this fold and the fold that we talked about last week, the character's relationship, have to somewhat uh, correlate together. Now, not so much the relationship. That means if I'm in love with someone and I'm playing uh, a scene, I mean, I could use anyone. I could use my dog in my substitution or my dad or my my wife, my kid, my girlfriend, my boyfriend, whatever it may be. It doesn't matter what the substitution is. It doesn't have to reflect the same exact character as the character in the relationship of the character, if that makes any sense. Okay, so let me make an example of this. Now, substitution work is something we're going to be talking about a lot. And um, it doesn't have to be about the relationship between you and another person. It could be if I was playing a crack addict or a heroin junkie. Or, or on the flip side, if I was playing the president of the United States or the galaxy. Uh, well, I don't know what that's like. I've never really been a president. I hate, by the way, the magical what if. What if I was the president? How would I act? What if my dad or mom died? How would I act? Because it's complete bullshit. It really is. I know firsthand because my father did die. Uh, my, I lost my father to cancer after five years of fighting. And when I was younger, I would always imagine, because I was very close to my dad, and on sad scenes, I would say, oh God, what if my dad died? How would I be? And then what I thought I would be, and then what it actually happened, were two complete different things. I mean, completely different things. And of course, being a sick actor that I am, holding my dad in the ICU of City of Hope, as he takes his last breath, as he's bringing him, they take him out of his life support, and tears, and I'm just losing my shit. A sick part of me was like, oh shit, Nico, you should probably... You know, use some sense of memory here. Remember this for future acting stuff. Pretty sick, right? Well, you, you'll end up doing that when you start working a lot. Um, but what I had thought I would feel was nothing like what I actually felt. Now, um, so that's why I'm not a fan of the magical what if. Now, now we're touching on next week's session, which is about objectives. Objectives are very important. That's your desire, your want, what are you fighting for in the scene. Everything, every want, every single thing that happens in a play, the characters want something from the other, and then the obstacles get in the way. But that objective of what I want from this guy in the scene, taking it back to last week's relationship, now that's got to correlate with my own substitution of what Nico wants from this character. So I'm going to substitute somebody for this person I'm playing with. So let's say I'm doing a football movie and this is my coach, right? Well, I've never played football. I mean, I have for fun, but I've never been in this situation. This character's a professional football player. Well, um, I could substitute my acting coach for the coach, or I could substitute, it depends on what I want. If I want you to tell me I'm amazing, if I want you to love me, if I want you to put me on a pet, if I want respect from you, if I need you to tell me I am the best athlete on the planet, best actor in the world, that's what I want, that is my desire, does not mean I will get it by no means, but never, ever play a weak objective. Go for the world. Shoot, go for it all. Don't don't hold back. Uh, again, I'm touching on stuff for next week. So, um, I need respect. I need. I want you, uh, whatever it may be, right? So now, in the scene, Nico's substitution is for somebody who I really need this love or respect or whatever the objective is in real life. It's nobody's business. It's your secret. Nobody, not even the director needs to know who you're substituting. Most people don't even know, do substitution work. But I find it to be very helpful in a scene. You know, uh, so, and this really comes in handy when you're doing film. Film and television, because television shoots in eight days. You don't have much time. Film, you might have six months. But the problem with film is that because they shoot out of continuity, we're doing Saving Private Ryan, let's say, and I meet the guy where, man, whatever, the actors are playing this morning, we just met, and we're going to be best friends, and we're probably going to shoot for nine months in the freaking wherever, right, in the jungle somewhere, right? I'm just mixing everything up. By the way, I I am all over the place all the time. You'll get used to it. Uh, oh, shit. So, 
I meet this guy this morning. We're going to shoot, right? Then we're going to spend the nine months filming together. And unfortunately, in film, as Murphy's Law, you know, is always the hardest, craziest scene first for financial reasons or it's raining or whatever. The director comes up to me and says, Nico, we're going to shoot his death scene where you're holding his body together and his guts are all out. He's crying, screaming, you're bawling your eyes out because, you know, you will, he is your brother now. You love him and so forth. And we're going to shoot that at 10 o'clock today before lunch. This is going to be the first shot of the film. Now, good thing we have nine months for me to get some relationship with this real person. But no, I just met him four hours ago. Now I got to do all this work and they're going to shoot that scene first. I'm an actor. I can't say, oh, oh, no, I prefer you not do that, Mr. Spielberg, right? So I have to substitute somebody that, you see, now this is where I could use my dad. You understand? Or my dog that, you know, if you lost something, or it doesn't even have to be life or death. It doesn't have to be death. It could be anything. If I'm playing a crack addict and a junkie, a heroin junkie, well, I've never done heroin, right? And, uh, does this mean I should go and do heroin because I'm method acting in this scene? Well, that's just ridiculous. I'll be dead. I'm going to get hooked into junk, right? So I'm going to have to substitute something genuine that Nico would do the things. I mean, I've, I've heard that heroin junkies will get down and suck some guy off, a guy. Or, you know, when they need the next fix. Well, I don't think I would ever do that. Well, I need to do that. I need to figure out what it is for me Right? I mean, you've heard these stories about mothers who have this incredible superhuman power in the time of need where they lift the car up with their babies underneath it or going to get Well, something like that is the substitution that you as an actor can use, whatever your personal thing is, for me to keep my father alive. That would be a great substitution for heroin. Right? Although it's no correlation whatsoever, but the correlation is. The want, the desire, the objective is the same thing. I need you. Right? Right now. I need that fix. I will do whatever it takes. I need you. So my substitution, not so much for the opposite character. Right now, I'm substituting for the object itself, the heroine. My relationship to the heroine, not to the other person, is going to be me keeping my father alive. You lifting the car up because of your, you're, you're walking on your wife or cheating on you. Whatever it may be, what you would want. Again, doesn't mean you're going to get it, but you got to fight for it. We're talking about objective again. So, um, substitution is... Taking personal life experiences of your own whatever years you've been alive. Now, this is the part I tell my students, especially the ones who've had a really rough life. If you had a, real, a lot of shit happen to you, like you just, you know, everything. Adoption, boyfriend cheating, suicide, heroin, junkie, whatever. It's living on the street. This is the only time you can take all the trash of your life and... Use it as pearls because you actually have substance. You understand? You got to be careful not to make it about therapy, though. I mean, a lot of this does get therapeutic, and there is drama therapy and what's not. But what I'm saying is the horrible shit that you've had to deal with in your life are actual jewels now for you. On the flip side, I'm not telling actors who don't have had a, have not had a horrible life that, oh, God, you better go fucking live on the street and get some life experience because that doesn't mean anything. I'm just saying the ones that do have it. Use it if it's appropriate to the scene. Okay? You gotta always use logic. If it's not appropriate to the scene, then you are just overacting and being a drama queen and has nothing to do with it. Right? Um, so, substitution is substituting something for whatever it is from your personal life to the character's life. So, now we go back to the relationship from last week. Now you got to go through it and personalize everything for yourself, the actor, not the character, so that you can have organic, true feelings for it. Now, all this being said, like, especially, look, substitution only works if you need it to work. If, it don't, if you don't need it, then don't do it. I mean, I usually say sex scenes and girl scenes and boy scenes, first time scenes, you don't really need substitution because that energy is already, that chemistry is already going to be there. You know, you're going to make out with this chick. She's hot. You like her. You you know, even though your character is, unless it's the flip side, like nine and a half weeks where Kim Basinger and Mickey Rourke hated each other. But that spark was there, you know. Uh, 
Anyway, so that's what substitution work is. So now go back. What's my relationship to this person? Who is this guy? Who am I using? Who am I, who is Nico substituting on top of all the stuff we did last week? Right? And that now has got to be something that is effective for you right now in, in that way. Look, uh, ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends, breakups are only good to be substitutes if they're fresh. If you've been broken up with your wife or divorced or whatever, and it's been six years and you've had like had 15 other boyfriends or another relationship and you really don't care. And now you're realizing, oh shit, you know what? We weren't right for each other. Well, that's not going to work. Again, you're going to be acting. You don't want to do acting. It's the only craft in the world that if you're doing it, you're doing it wrong. The worst thing you can say to an actor is, oh, I saw you acting, right? It should be as if you're running in lines with your scene partner and somebody comes in the middle and starts joining in. That's when you know you're good. You know, a lot of my advanced masterclass students, I, if they're working on um, a monologue or something, I'd say, okay, now take your monologue, go to a bar, you know, or a coffee shop or whatever it is, you know, two or three in the morning. We were doing, uh, I was directing Glengarry Glenn Ross by David Mamet, and my aroma, um, great, great exercise, I thought. Uh, you know, go to a, a bar or movie theater somewhere and strike up a conversation with your monologue without adding a single word, right? And have them join in. And they will. And if they do join in and interrupt you, that's a good thing. That means they believe you. If they sit back and applaud you at the end, well, then you're acting. Then you know it's phony. But to be able to pull it off when nobody else knows you're acting, that's when you know you're good. See? segue. Always segue. Anyway, so back to relationship. Now, everything we talked about last week, now you got to add the second layer after you've done all that homework. Now make it all about your own personal self and substitutions for those choices that you've made from last week. So that when you're looking at this person, something will click and you will go. And, uh, and substitution is to make it personal and make it real for yourself. All right. Uh, okay, next week we'll talk about objectives, which I touched on today. God, I psycho babble. All right, guys, uh, comment and I'll respond. And um, okay, bye bye. Oh, also, you know, I'm doing this really off the cuff. Uh, I don't know if I want to make it all, you know, pretty and lights and shit. I'm just using my iPhone. Um, keeping it real. All right, see you next week. Bye bye.